Hello, everybody. Dr. Lonnie Stewart here from the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Are you a physical therapy student about to start studying for the National Physical Therapy Examination? Or maybe you're a professor, a program director, or a clinical instructor who teaches DPT students preparing for the NPTE? Either way, we would recommend checking out our sponsor, NPTE Final Frontier, and the community they've built around preparing for and succeeding on the NPTE. That exam and the preparation that goes along with it can be long, tedious, difficult, and stress-inducing, but it doesn't have to be. NPTE Final Frontier has the tactics and resources to help address all of the usual barriers. They even have scholarships to help with NPTE study courses, FSBPT registration fees, and even research opportunities. And if that's not enough, they're even donating to the very first annual HET Podcast Scholarship to be awarded at the end of every year. Go to NPTEFF.com for all of the details and use code HET for 10% off all purchases. Links to both the NPTE Final Frontier and their scholarship options are available in the show notes. And now, let's get ready to learn. Hi, it's Farley Schweigert, one of the co-hosts of the HET podcast with another Teach Me Something Tuesday. Today, I wanted to talk about the power of the circle. I use this technique a lot, not only in the classroom, but in my hypotherapy clinic that we have on campus, where we have an IPE experience with both OTD and DPT students, leading basically a student clinic through hypotherapy. And so every day after we get done treating all of our clients, we stand in a circle. So we stand in a circle and we talk about what went well. What didn't go well? So then everybody can learn. There's no corners. There's no leader and follower, like in a traditional classroom setup. And I really like this method, especially for debriefing after a student clinic. But I also use this in the classroom for several different conversations. I've used it when I talk about current events. I've used it when I have talk through sensitive issues in psychosocial. And one of my favorite things about circle time is that it brings everybody on the same page. Everybody is on the same level. There's no us versus them. There's no, it's a we. It's a we and a an us and no versus. And I think it also promotes collegiality. It promotes, oh, we're going to be colleagues and you value what I have to say. Now, I will say that it takes a little time to get students comfortable with this. I've had to work a lot through that this past year in our clinic because students have not had to communicate on a level playing field with people. In academia, it's usually leader follower, us versus them. So it took a lot for this cohort to really get in the group of the system. Once they have, it's worked golden like it has for the past five years. But it took coaching. It took laying out expectations. It took up into, and it took being patient. It took being patient. It also took dealing with the awkward silence that is very stressful for people and is often stressful for educators. So one of the key things to helping these students work through that has been given them requirements of how many times they have to speak. So some days it's been two comments and a question or just two comments or whatever you want to do to fill that space. So it's a great tool. I'm finding that I'm having to coach that tool to get it to work to its full effectiveness. But I still believe in it. I still believe in the power of the circle. And I hope it helps you in some of your conversations as well. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Well, I hope that episode was entertaining as much as it was informational and educational. If you enjoyed this episode or any of our past episodes, we ask you to please subscribe to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. And please share out the episodes to those who you feel may be able to benefit from them. We also urge you to follow us on all social media platforms at HET Podcast and let us know what topics or experts you would like to hear from in future episodes. And just as a reminder, none of the information on today's show should be considered medical advice. It's simply infotainment or edutainment to help educate our audience. 
For medical advice, we always advise you to reach out to your preferred medical professionals, and we'll see you on the next show.